Alright, so in this video and the next few videos, we'll be going for a deep dive into ballistics. Hopefully it'll be fun. We're going to be analysing the motion of projectiles immediately after they have been thrown, catapulted or simply projected. Now before we go any further, let's first uh, list some assumptions. Now the concept around projectile motion is that an object is thrown close to the Earth's surface and we're going to be analysing the motion immediately after it's been thrown. So the only force the object is subjected to is gravity. To keep it simple, we're going to assume the object is small and heavy enough to not experience any air resistance or any other forces. And finally, because there's no other forces, the motion only occurs in the vertical plane. The vertical or the X, Y plane. So it's only a 2D motion with horizontal and vertical components. So what we're going to find is an expression for the acceleration as a vector equation. We're going to find an expression for the velocity as a vector equation and the position as a vector equation and we're going to formulate a uh, equation for the trajectory of the object. Alright, let's draw a picture. So we're going to start with our object that's just been fired. We'll put it at the origin at the start of its trajectory. It's fired with an initial velocity v0 and note that it's a vector at an angle theta with respect to the horizontal. It was Galileo that initially showed that the path of a projectile is a parabola and we're going to confirm that result. And the only force drawn as a red vector acting on the object is its weight. So the acceleration vector we're going to find in terms of its components acceleration in the X plus an acceleration component in the Y same with the velocity vector it's going to have a horizontal component and a vertical component and of course it's the same with the position vector which will also have horizontal and vertical components. So with the position vector equation we can find where the projectile is at any time during its flight. And from the equation of the trajectory we can use this to find out other quantities such as maximum projectile height. We can work out the range and we can calculate the flight time. Now because vectors can be broken into horizontal and vertical components we'll do this to the initial velocity vector. So this V0 can be broken down into we have here V0x so the initial velocity in the x direction And we have V0 sub y, the vertical component of the initial velocity. So we have the horizontal and we have the vertical. So for our first problem, acceleration, we need to sum up the respective components of the forces. So let's start with the sum of the forces in the x direction. Since the only force is vertical, being gravity, the sum of the forces in the x is equal to zero. And according to Newton's second law, this is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration in the x direction only. So we have here the equation of motion mAx is equal to zero. I can cancel out the m here because zero divided by m is also equal to zero. And this, of course, gives us the horizontal component of the acceleration. For the vertical component, 
we sum up all the forces in the y direction and the only force here is weight due to gravity and because the arrow is pointing downwards, this red arrow is pointing downwards I'm going to write it as negative w and that's going to be equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Now force due to weight is always equal to mg so we have w equals mg we have the negative in front and it's equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction having an m on both sides I can cancel that and therefore the vertical component of acceleration is equal to negative g so now we combine these two together to form our acceleration vector equation so we have a equals 0i plus minus g in the j direction which simply equals negative g by the j vector. Next we work out the components of velocity so we're given that a sub x is equal to 0 a sub x can also be written as the first time derivative of the velocity in the x direction and that's equal to 0 so if I integrate both sides with respect to time with respect to dt I get the result v sub x is equal to a constant let's label this as c sub 1 and that makes sense according to Newton's first law because there's no acceleration there's no horizontal component of acceleration the velocity is simply going to stay constant in that direction so by inspection the only value that c sub 1 can take is the initial horizontal component of velocity and v0x I can express as v0 the magnitude of the initial velocity by the cosine of theta now in the vertical direction we had here a sub y equals negative g so let's write that as dvy dt equals negative g and we perform the time integral on both sides and the result is v sub y as a function of time equals negative g t plus another constant of integration let's call this c sub 2 to find c sub 2 we just simply apply the initial condition so we have v sub y at time equals 0 equals negative g by 0 plus c2 which equals the initial velocity in the y direction v0y we can write v0y as v0 sine theta the sine of the projection angle so therefore c sub 2 equals v0 sine theta which means vy of t equals negative g t plus v naught sine theta so our velocity vector equation is simply the addition of the components and that's equal to v sub 0 by the cosine of the projection angle plus I'm going to write the vy term more neatly as v0 sine theta minus gt by the j vector okay let's now find the expressions for the components of displacement or position of the projectile earlier I wrote this as r of x for the horizontal component of the position uh, for convenience I'm just going to call this x so we're going to find an expression for x as a function of time from above we found v in the x direction which we can also write as the first derivative of displacement in the horizontal with respect to time and that was equal to v0 by the cosine of theta again we integrate both sides with respect to t and the result of that is x of t equals v0 by the cosine of theta by time plus a constant let's call this c sub 3 which of course we find through applying the initial condition x of t at uh, time 0 equals v0 cosine of theta 
by 0 plus c3 equals, well we start at uh, x equals 0 because that's the x coordinate of the origin. So this means that c3 equals 0 and we get x of t equals simply v0 by the cosine of theta t. Similarly, I'm going to write the vertical position ry as just y of t and vy can also be expressed as dy dt which we found was equal to v0 by the sine of theta minus gt. Apply the integral to both sides and this results in the function y of t equals v0 by the sine of theta t minus a half g t squared. And of course don't forget the addition of a constant. Let's call this c sub 4 and to find that we apply the initial condition again y at time 0 equals v0 by the sine of theta by 0 minus a half g 0 squared plus c4 and the y coordinate of the origin is also equal to 0. So we eliminate the first two terms and c4 is also equal to 0 and therefore we get the expression y of t equals v0 sine theta by t minus a half g t squared. And let's uh, unite those into our position vector equation r of t equals x in the i direction plus y in the j direction which equals v0 cosine theta t i plus v0 sine theta t minus a half g t squared j. Okay finally we're going to develop an equation for the trajectory and I've just copied and pasted our diagram here. The trajectory is depicted by this yellow dashed line and we're going to write it as an equation with y as a function of x. Well from above here we have y as a function of t is equal to v0 by the sine of t minus a half gt squared. Let's copy that down. Also from our previous work we've got the x coordinate as a function of time is equal to v0 by the cosine of t. So we have the x and y coordinates parameterized in terms of time. What I can do now is to rearrange x of t and I'll write t is equal to x divided by v0 cos theta. So that's just moving this term here downstairs and I'm going to substitute this into the equation for y. So that means y is equal to v0 sine theta by x on v0 cos theta minus a half by g by x on v0 cos theta all squared. So for the front term v0 on the top and v0 on the bottom cancel and we are left with x by sine theta on cos theta. Well sine theta on cos theta is equal to the tangent so write this as tan theta. For the second term let's copy down the half by g and if we expand the power into the parentheses we got x squared on v0 squared by the cosine squared of theta. So I can write this more neatly as x tan theta minus g on 2 v naught squared by cosine squared theta by x squared. And for most intents and purposes this equation is perfectly fine. But if we wanted to we could do some more manipulation. We can write this as copy down the first term x tan theta 
minus g. The cosine squared on the bottom can be written as a secant squared on the top on 2 v naught squared by x squared. The Pythagorean identity for secant squared is 1 plus the tan squared of theta. So therefore I can write this as y is equal to x tan theta minus x squared by g on 2 v0 squared by 1 plus tan squared theta. And so we have y in terms of x. And because we have an x squared, we indeed have the expression for a parabola. Okay, so for all the formulas that we've derived in this video, hopefully they are familiar to you and they make sense and they match what you have in your classroom studies. We'll leave this video here, but we'll do some examples of projectile motion in upcoming videos. So please subscribe and stay tuned for those. Please like this video if it's helped you and please share it with your study buddies. And to help me make more videos, I'd really appreciate any small donation that you can give via the link in the description below. For now, best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.